Maybe that's why they often ask, why do we need missionaries here? There are places in North America where there are very few churches. People are very open to conversation, but nine times out of ten, they have not heard of Jesus. There is no pastors, there is no people can share the gospel with them. There's lies that can be made whole with the gospel. And we're watching God change people's hearts and change people's lives. But I wish people knew how many more laborers we need in the mission field. Because it's more than we can handle. Church planting is hard. We just got to work together. We can do more together than we can do apart. We need all the help that we can get. And that's what Annie does. It allows for more laborers to come here. The Annie Armstrong Easter offering unites us all, big and little, young and old, black and white. We all give because we know that when we do, our communities will look more like this. And we all give because we know there's a name and a face on the other side of that gift. This offering, this gift, that we're giving to and that everyone else is giving to, it does have a face. It's my face. This is the body. This is the body of Christ. That's what any Armstrong means to me. Well, amen. 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 And, and in about three weeks, we're going to have a week of prayer, uh, April 2nd through 9th, uh, praying for North American missions. It is more than church planting. It is reaching the lost. It is strengthening churches. It is evangelism. It is disaster relief. Uh, it is, yes, church planting as we just saw. Uh, consider how you can give, how you can pray. And the first Friday fast, yes, that's coming again, happens to be on Good Friday. Now, some of you who love to eat and are not going to think that's a very good Friday, right? But you know what? We get to pray together. We get to lift up together uh, North American missions. So start thinking about that as, as we uh, get ready for the first week of April. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you to stand. We're going to look at Psalm 18. Psalm 18, and start with verse 1. If you have your Bible with you, um, I would love for you to open your Bible. Let's stand together in honor of God's Word. And, uh, and we're going to read that. Let me just welcome you as you're standing to our worship today. We are, uh, we are worshiping together with just a little bit of snow, right? You kind of wish it's either going to snow all the way or not snow all the way. For me personally, I think I wish it would, would not snow all the way, right? But, uh, but we got a little bit of snow, a little bit of uh, spinning out there. So I want to welcome those who are joining us from home or joining us from wherever you are, and of course, welcome you all that are here today. Psalm, 1, Psalm 18, not 118, Psalm 18, uh, starting with verse 1, it says this, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Listen to this. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And remember the last part of that? And I am saved from my enemies. Father, we praise you. We thank you, God. We lift up your name. We, Lord, affirm with this psalm of David. That we love you, O Lord, our strength. We love you, O Lord, who is our rock, our fortress, our salvation. We love you, God, because you are worthy to be praised. And God, we love you through the snow. We love you through the dry times. We love you through the heat. We love you through the cold. We love you when there's a bunch of us together packed tight. We love you, Lord, when there's just a few of us worshiping together intimately. But God, most of all, we love you because you sent your son, Jesus, to die for our sins and for the sins of the world. And Lord, we pray that as we reach, teach, share, serve others, God, it will be in the name 
of Jesus. That it will be all about the gospel. And God, as we prepare for a week of prayer, that first week, God, that holy week, may it be a time of worship as we lift up the name above all names. Be with us, Lord, as we worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remain standing and let's worship together. All right. What a song to begin with. Forever. Can't imagine that. But I can't wait. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched tongue. Love endures forever for the life that's been reborn. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Son, his love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Healing every 
be seated, please. Amen. God is good, amen? Amen. Yes, he is good all the time. Praise the Lord for that. We're going to look at Mark chapter 1 again. We're looking at Mark chapter 1, and um, I'm going to sound like a broken record every time I go to that. Every week it's going to be Mark, Mark something, Mark something, right? And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. As we work through the gospel of Mark, here's why I like to... Um, to spend time in God's Word looking at uh, a verse by verse, paragraph by paragraph, uh, chapter by chapter, book by book. But here's why I like that. I'm going to set that here, okay? I won't sit on it, I promise. Okay. So um, I like this because, because of this. Oftentimes, preachers will pick a particular topic or, or subject and they like it. They, they go back to it, and they go back to it, and they go back to it. It becomes a, a little hobby horse for them, right? Now, hear this. This is not a knock on other preachers. Please hear that. It's just a different style. I like preaching through scriptures because of this. As I'm preaching it, it will force me to look at texts that I don't necessarily want to look at myself, that I don't necessarily want to explore because it's uncomfortable, it's not always the thing I want to preach, but because I'm going through it, God has given us in the word something that we've got to treat. And so you're going to get a full diet of scripture when we go verse by verse, paragraph by paragraph, book by book. Does that make sense? Amen? Okay. So we're going to look at uh, the, the book of Mark again. We're going to look at uh, uh, chapter one, and we're going to start with verse 14. So we're going to look at that. We're going to spend a little bit of time with that. Now, before I get started, I want to mention this to you. Some of you have seen, and where are those sheets that have been passing around where people, somebody hold up the sheet if you got the sheet. Yeah, we got one back there. We should have another one somewhere. So if you will do me a favor, um, if you find a sheet, it's a sign-up sheet, sign-in sheet um, to pass around. I'm not taking attendance. Hear that, okay? I'm not taking attendance. What I want to do is make sure that we have an accurate uh, phone number and email address that if, what if we got 10 inches today, right? What would we do? We would have deacons call, Sunday school teachers call, different people calling people. But we've got a system that is very easy to do that can call everybody all at once. And everybody can get this within three minutes. Everybody knows, hey, we're not going to have worship uh, uh, in-person worship because of the hill that we've got, right? And and so we're going to do it uh, virtually. Or a special announcement. So this, this is what's going around. So if somebody could pass those, those sheets around if you see it, now you know what it's about. Amen? And we'll have this available um, uh, at the bulletin board uh, in future weeks. If you miss it, if you're watching this from Facebook, um, you can go ahead and, and sign in your information there. Then. Okay, got that out of the way, an announcement within the, within the message. Okay, let's look at um, uh, Mark chapter 1. Do me a favor, let's stand in, God, uh, in honor of God's word one more time as we look at it. 14 through 20, not a long passage, right? All right, you ready? Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he, he meaning Jesus, saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. Father, we praise you for your word. We praise you that your word will force us to look at passages that we don't always want to look at. But Lord, we know that your word is truth, that your Holy Spirit guides us through your word to, to change our hearts, to transform our mind, 
to cause our hands and feet to go into action. So Lord, speak to the preacher as well as those who are hearing the preaching so that we're all changed by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a seat, please. I'm going to tell you my, my greatest fishing story, okay? Now, some of you know this, some of you don't know this, that I grew up in Florida. How many of you knew I grew up in Florida? A few of you did, okay. I grew up in South Florida, south of Miami. There is a place south of Miami. And, uh, and so I grew up down there. And uh, up until I was 18 years old, I, I lived down there um, from about the age of 8 to 18. And uh, really my formative years in, in South Florida. And my parents loved to take us camping and they would take us camping in the Florida Keys. Anybody ever been to the Florida Keys? Awesome, right? Isn't it cool to go to? And so we would go to the Florida Keys. And, um, and so we went to this one place. And I think it was called Siesta Key, maybe? And it was a, it was a campground there. And uh, now I'm really pulling out of my memory banks here uh, uh, the story. And I remember uh, just being just, just uh, like a man possessed with fishing. I wanted to catch fish. And so I would get this fishing pole and I was just like 12 years old. And I, and I realized that these little brim, these little tiny fish, I could catch them when I put a piece of bread at the end of my pole. No, they were grunts, not brim. And so I, they would call them grunts. I don't know what that kind of fish is. We call them grunts, okay? And so we put, I would put bread in there. I'd stick it in there in, at the marina, at the docks. And all of a sudden, all these fish go, they're like piranhas eating the bread. Right? And I wouldn't catch anything. They wouldn't, they wouldn't bite the hook. They wouldn't do anything. And somebody watched me do it and said, son, you need to put the bread on there a little bit better. You're just feeding the fish. <laughs> so so I, I put the bread on a little better, made it attached a little bit better. And lo and behold, I'm catching a fish. I am pulling this thing. I'm just going, woo, woo. I'm fighting this thing. People are around me. They're watching me pull this fish up, trying to pull it up. I pull it up. I pull it up, and it's, it's this fish about this big. <laughs> and I literally heard people laughing as I caught my first little fish, right? Took it off, threw it back in, and just kept on fishing. My brother used to say when we would be at, uh, at the campground and we would see people fishing, he used to come up to him and he would say, you catching anything? And I always thought that was a weird thing to say, but it was a way of him talking to people. And, and, and so I'm going to ask you this question. Are you catching anything? Now, I'm not talking about fish. I'm not talking about hunting for deer or, or turkey or whatever you like to do. I'm talking about people. Jesus takes this this, this situation that he's in, and he turns it into fishing for people. Now, when we look at this story, we remember that, that, and we go back to chapter 1. Now, you all remember chapter 1, early on in chapter 1, that John the Baptist is being sent. Do you remember this? How many of y'all remember this? Amen? Y'all awake, right? Okay, here we go. And so, so John the Baptist is being sent. He proclaims and clears the way and, and makes the path straight for Jesus. And then Jesus comes, and John the Baptist, what, what does he do for Jesus? He baptizes him. Remember that? He baptizes him. Jesus lived. Jesus died. Jesus rose again. It is a pointing to the future. When we baptize today, we, we are really illustrating through immersion baptism that, that Christ has lived, Christ has died, Christ has risen again. We are risen to walk in a new life in Christ. And so, and so we are actually showing that when we get baptized. That's why baptism is so important. And by the way, if you didn't notice, early Baptists in this country died because people were persecuting them because they dared get baptized by immersion after they believed. Did you know that? They actually died because of that. And so, so here you've got, you've got Jesus being baptized, and, and, and then he's tempted. And you remember last week, if you haven't seen it, you can go back on our YouTube page and you can look at it. And he's been tempted, and he fights Satan with Scripture 
And so Satan comes at him with scripture, and then Jesus comes back with scripture, and finally Jesus begins his ministry. Now, during this time, John the Baptist is arrested. And now is where we are in our setting here, where Jesus is now, his ministry is beginning, as he does what? He proclaims the kingdom of God. Church, today we're going to ask, I'm asking a question, are you catching anything? Because I want to give you three truths that I think are really important that we must remember here and we must take it to heart here. I'm going to warn you right now. At the end of this service, I'm going to ask you to respond in some way, whether you are praying for someone or praying for yourself or dedicating between now and Easter Sunday a chance for you to, to, to pray, to take action in some way that God is speaking to you that you might bring somebody else into the kingdom of Christ. That's uncomfortable, amen? Yes, it is. But it should be something that we should all challenge ourselves with. God bless you, whoever sees. Okay, here we go. Three truths. Here's the first one. You're going to see the slide behind me. Here's the first one, and it's this. The time is short. The world is out of it. The time is short. But the world is out of it. What's he saying? What am I saying here? As Jesus is passing through and he's proclaiming the kingdom of God, look at what he says in verse 15. You got your Bibles open? Say, Amen, Amen. amen. All right, come on. That's, that wasn't very enthusiastic. You got your Bibles open? Say, Amen, Amen. amen, amen. All right, here we go. Okay. Verse 15. Jesus is saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the time is now. The kingdom of God is now. And what does he say to them? He says, repent and believe the gospel. Let me just begin by saying, we preach a gospel of repentance. If you're writing that down there uh, behind me, it says we preach a gospel of repentance. Now, a gospel of repentance is what John the Baptist was, was preaching but yet he did not have the full revelation of Jesus Christ. He had hints, he had ideas, he knew what was going on from the Old Testament. But when Jesus came, Jesus lived a perfect life, and then what did he do? He died on the cross and rose from the grave the third day. We now have the full gospel, right? We have the full gospel. John the Baptist preached repentance, but Jesus is saying, listen, I am here, it is time Repent and believe in the gospel. What is this gospel he's talking about? The gospel is nothing else but the free gift of salvation to you. Hear this. It is a gift that you are able to receive that God has given to you. It's not a gift that you get. Uh, it's not a gift that you get and then you got to work for it. It's not, hey, you can get to heaven if you do this, 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 and this. It is a gift that you receive because Jesus died on a cross. And if you believe and trust in him and repent, turn from your sins and turn to him. The Bible says, if anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. And so you, you have to understand it is a gift. Now, I remember years ago, I had a, a couple of, 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 of Mormon missionaries. Anybody ever see Mormon missionaries? They're very easy to recognize. They, they usually wear white shirts and ties and they ride bicycles and they got name tags. It's true. It's true. It's, I'm not mocking them. I'm just saying that's how you recognize them. But I remember a few years back, my son, my middle son, who's now a pastor, was going through a course in Bible college, and he said, hey, I need to get a, a Mormon book, the Book of Mormon. And if you go online, it's, uh, they used to have commercials, they probably still do, you can call an 800 number, or you can email them, or go to their website, and you can get a Book of Mormon from them, okay? Now, don't do that, okay? But he, he wanted to do that. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I will get it for you, and I'll use the church's address. So, so he said, okay, well, that's fine. So I, 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 I went ahead, I went and got the, the, ordered the Book of Mormon, 
And lo and behold, a few weeks later, I get a couple of Mormon missionaries coming to the church to share the Book of Mormon and to share the gospel with me, right? So I sit them in my office. We're having a long conversation. We're talking about it. Finally, I realize, listen to this, they have seven steps. Seven, hear this, steps to get to paradise, to heaven, to eternity. You got to do this, and 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 you got to do this. They have created among themselves a stairway to heaven in which there is no evidence of that in Scripture. A stairway to heaven doesn't exist. It's only a direct pathway to heaven through Jesus Christ. And I finally said to these guys, after the, our second visit together, I said, guys, you are deceived. Let me tell you why you're deceived. And I just shared the gospel of grace with them. See, you have to repent. You have to turn from your sins. But the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God, is nothing other than a free gift of salvation to mankind. It's, it's a good news about Jesus Christ. Let me say this phrase. The new news of the good news is the news about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? The sun has arrived. The time is now. Jesus is here. And so people today only have a ch one choice. It's either to follow Jesus or turn away from him. That's it. You either are a follower of Jesus Christ or you've turned away from Jesus Christ. And, and so the, what Jesus is saying here is the time is now. Because the time is now for us. And we're running out of time. We don't know when he's going to return. We don't know when the day of Christ comes. And the people that we love the most will be left on the outside instead of being on the inside. This is not telling people about going on a cruise or going to Disney World. This is their eternal souls we're talking about. And so when we're talking about the gospel, the gospel of repentance, we are saying that to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you need to repent of your sins and receive Jesus. Because the gospel, hear this, other thing that you've got there, is the world's only hope. Amen? How many of you all almost forgot about daylight savings time? I won't say if you forgot. You're all here, okay? You're here though, amen? Praise God, you're here. And, and I mean, I put multiple reminders on Facebook, or, you know, and I know that doesn't, doesn't always happen. And, 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 you know, even Teresa and I were talking yesterday afternoon. I said, oh, it's daylight savings time tonight. She said, well, change your clocks now. And I said, okay, well, change your clocks now. So we went to bed earlier than normal and, you know, and all of that, all that stuff, right? You know, we could turn our clocks back an hour or bring them forward an hour. I don't know why we do it. You all know why we do it? I have no idea why we do it. Don't tell me it's to save energy. I don't know why we do it. Huh? Farmers. Farmers? Is it farmers? Playing golf? Is that it? Is that right? <laughs> Look, I don't care what it is. We can change our clocks all we want. We can't change a clock in eternity. And Jesus Christ will come at the time that the Father says he will come. And the time is short. The world is out of it. Let's go to the second one. The task is great. And you're no ordinary fisherman. The task is great. And you're no, you're, you are no ordinary fisherman. So, so here's Simon, Peter, and Andrew. And they're doing what they've always done. What are they doing? They're fishermen. They're, they, the, the, the verse 16 says they're fishermen. And what do fishermen do? They fish. Right? They don't use poles. They use nets. I know that. And, and, and so there's nothing special here. It's very mundane. It's very ordinary. It's the same thing every day. It's not like you watch on TV where they go out getting these king crabs and all this. And it's so thrilling. I'm sure it's as boring as can be on a daily basis over time. But listen, everybody has these, these tasks. And I do tasks. You do tasks. We do ordinary tasks on every day, and we do those things because this is what we do. And this is what Simon, Peter, and Andrew are doing. And, and there's nothing special except for Jesus when he comes in contact with them. What does he do? He sees them, 
And he says to them, follow me. And I will make you not fishers of those fish, but fishers of men. Now the other gospels talk about how he had them cast the net off to the side and all that. We're not going to get into that right now. The point is that Jesus says, you'll be a fisher of men. And, and so, so ordinary men with ordinary jobs and God uses these fishermen to change the world. Now think about that. They don't have to be exceptional. They didn't have to be educated. They didn't have to be religious people. They just, listen, they just had to be willing. They had to be desiring to be used by God. They didn't have to be rich. They didn't have to be, to be, to have the degrees. I mean, Jesus didn't go to Jerusalem and say to the Pharisees, hey, you guys follow me. He went to the fishermen because they knew the fishermen were willing to be willing to follow him. My dad went to college for, for one semester when he was in the Air Force. He was an ordinary guy. He was a businessman. I, I told this to Joanne the other day. He owned donut shops. Imagine being a kid and your dad owning donut shops. Amen? <laughs> Praise God, right? And he's donut, donut. He's got these donut shops. He would start a donut shop, and then he would uh, run it for a little while. Then he would sell it off. He would start another one. He was an entrepreneur, and and he was this 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 no neck Italian guy who just who just loved to, to to do the thrill of the chase of business until he met Jesus. And when he met Jesus at the age of 43, God radically changed him. And God used him in a radical way. And my dad began to, 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 to cook. He used his experiences from the past. And he began to cook at his church and on our Wednesday nights. And he, he, he used his gifts of being able to teach. And he was a great leader. He was able to lead people. He was a deacon. He, was a, he, was, he did all these different things. My dad, who was an ordinary guy, did extraordinary things until the day he passed at the age of 70. Paul tells us that all of our gifts, everything that we do, should be used for the glory of God. Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that we're to use the gifts that the Spirit gives us so that we can serve and build one another up. Are you a teacher? Then you should teach. Are you merciful? Then go and be merciful. Are you a skilled administrator? Then lead. Do you have the gift of serving people? Then be on the team and serve. If you have experiences, even hurtful experiences, God uses those too. Rick Warren famously said, God never wastes a hurt. Think about that. If you have been in pain and you've had a bad experience somewhere, God can use that later on. He can take that test and turn it into a testimony. Amen? Amen? He can take those things and he can use those. Can God use those? You bet. God uses crazy, far out experiences. Even 12 year old boys catching a little tiny fish to be used down the road decades later as an illustration for the glory of God. You have experiences I've never had. I've got experiences you've never had. And God uses every single person, every gift, every experience, every talent to advance the kingdom. You're not an ordinary fisherman. Because if you're a believer, listen to this. Here's a, the second point. Then you are a missionary. If you're a believer in the church, then you are a missionary. It means that you are to share the love of Jesus Christ with everybody you talk about. Do you have to be Billy Graham? No. You just have to share what you know. You got to share the joy of Jesus. You walk with a little bit different. You walk in love in Christ. You share what you know and what you have done and what God has done for you. If you look at the fishermen, the fishermen realized that they're missionaries and they shared the gospel with others. Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 10 shows how what happens when you send the, those people out, you send the 12 out, you send the, the 72 out. And, and boy, I'm sure they really stumbled all along the way. You ever do something for the first time and really were bad at it? Amen? My, my son and I put a shower together in my bathroom. You know what? 
We were really bad at it. We were really bad at it. And Jamie and I were there and he said, well, what if we folded this a little bit different and push this in here and put it down here? I said, well, we could try. Let's try it. Yeah, okay, we'll try it. And I said, by the time we get good at this, we're going to be ready to do another one, but there's not another one to do, right? We, we just, we, sometimes when you do something for the first time, you can get really bad at it. In fact, it's expected. But you stumble along and you move along and you let God use it and you do it for his glory. So if you share your faith with somebody, you're going to stumble and trip and tumble and, and, and say dumb things. It's okay. The point is not that you say everything perfect, but that God uses you in a way that it brings him glory. You just say something. Just, you know, sing, right? When you were worshiping. Do you have to be a great singer to, to sing and worship? No. You just got to sing something, right? Some of y'all might not be able to carry a tune in a bucket. Who cares? You're singing with joy to Jesus. And it encourages people. I had to stop as we were singing. Brother Dennis, I had to stop as we were singing to hear you all singing. And it was a sweet, sweet sound. See, if you're a believer, you're a missionary. And if you're a missionary, you just got to try things. By the way, you're going to love this summer. This summer, we have a large church from Decatur, Illinois, that's sending us 12 or more missionaries. They said at least a dozen missionaries to help us reach our community for Jesus. Doing something that we call a kids camp. By the way, it's called VBS. But nobody knows what VBS means. So kids camp is a way to be able to reach people who don't know Jesus. Isn't that what VBS is about? Vacation Bible school to tell them about Jesus. We want to tell people who don't know who Jesus is about Jesus, right? And so they're going to be able to reach these kids through vacation Bible school, kids camp during the daytime. We need to also be up there and helping them. They're going to give us opportunities to do Mission trips outside or inside of this country. Praise God that we could be able to do that. You are a missionary. Hundred, listen, a hundred thousand people who do not know Jesus within a 10 minute drive of here. Hundred thousand. More than could fit in Paul Brown Stadium and, and probably combine Paul Brown Stadium with Great American Ballpark, and you probably have a hundred thousand people. Who don't know Jesus. Who, if Jesus were to come today, would be in hell. Church, that's a conservative estimate. The task is great. You are a fisherman. But with Christ, you are not an ordinary fisherman. You're something special. Here's a third. First truth, of course, I already said, is that, that the, the time is short. The world is out of it. The second Truth is, the task is great. You're not no ordinary fisherman. Here's the third one. The challenge is urgent. Respond immediately. The last point I want to make is how they responded with no hesitation. Did you notice that? Mark uses the words immediately a lot throughout his Gospels, but he uses it here, and he uses it several times. And take a look at verse 18. You still got your Bibles open? Say, amen, amen. amen. All right. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. You go to verse 20, after Jesus speaks to James and John, the sons of thunder, the sons of Zebedee, they're in their boats mending their nets, and what does he do? He immediately calls them, and what did they do? They left dear old dad and his servants in a boat, and they went and followed Jesus. They followed a radical call to a radical gospel with a radical savior to change the world radically. Church, Change the world radically. We're in urgent times. Our world is confused. People who generations, we've got generations of, of people who are challenging truth with their feelings. They know what truth is, and yet they say, but this is how I feel. And we get frustrated, but the truth is they've lost resiliency. They cannot bounce back. They've lost their ability to cope. People are more unhappy with more free time than ever before. COVID has damaged our children and our teens internally, mentally, 
spiritually, emotionally, and physically like never before. Spiritually as a country, we are impoverished. We are dead in the water if we don't begin to turn to Jesus as a country. In church, the worst thing we could do, hear this, the worst thing I can do, the most sinful thing that I could do, that any of us could do, is to close our eyes and ignore the cries of the world. We've got to change the world radically. And it means they need to turn to Jesus. I know it's countercultural. I know it's scandalous even. How dare we stand for objective truth? How dare we stand on the word of God? But listen, church, we must follow what the Bible says, where Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to get to heaven except through Jesus. Because he said it. And brothers and sisters, that means either you believe him or you don't. Either you say if Jesus is the only way, then you take action in it, or you don't. Either you get the gospel as a centerpiece in all you do, or you don't. But if you do, God will do some amazing things through you, and you will begin to fish for people like never before. You don't have to, to have a crusade, you just have to love people. That means to be on mission. That means to pray for your loved ones. That means to care for individuals. And yes, share if you have the opportunity. Outside, you can't see this, but out, out front in, in our welcome table, we've got the Pray for Your Five. Some of you have downloaded this. I've noticed the clicks on the emails I've sent, and you can actually download it. But I've also gave them away on Wednesday night. And you say, well, is it, what am I supposed to do with this? Well... You put five people or three people or one person or four people or two. I don't care how many. This is not a legalistic checkbox. Just put down some people that you can sincerely pray for on a daily basis that they may know Jesus. You say, well, I don't know if they know Jesus or not. Pray for them that you can know that they know. Amen? Amen. And so pray for your five. Now, here's the beauty about this. This is 513. You pray for your five, then out of the three of the list, you say, I want to do something special for that person. You send them a text message saying, I prayed for you today. I hope everything is going well. You bring them a gift at work. You send them a card. You do something radical that's creative that could, that could just connect with them a little further. And then you pray for the opportunity for one of the five or others that you can share your faith with them. You can say, hey, listen, we have a, a really loud preacher now at, at, at Beacon of Christ Church. Some crazy half Italian guy with a name we can't pronounce. Why don't you come and visit with me? I'll sit with you. Move two to one. Start with your five. Move to the three. Then move to the one. Church, Easter is coming. And Easter is a great time when people want to just go to church. They want to just go to church. Let's take advantage of that opportunity that people want to come to church. So invite them to your church. Be excited about your church. Wednesday night, we had, what, 23, 24 people here on Wednesday night. If you're not coming on Wednesday night, come on Wednesday night. We're going to do, we're going to talk the second part of how to read the Bible for all it's worth. And it's going to be how you can take tidbits of what you read and document them so you can really focus on one thing that you read and one truth that will affect you each day. Come Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Find a way to reach people in your own style, in your own experience, in your own gift, in your own way. So that they may know you. No, not know you, but know the Jesus that you know. The time is short. The world is out of it. The task is great. You're no ordinary fisherman. And the challenge is urgent. Respond immediately. The church I had offered during this time and in the beginning of this message, I said, you know, this 
should be a time when you can respond in some way. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you a little bit unco- to be uncomfortable. I know some of you say, man, I came through a little bit of snow to get up here and I'm going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, you are. Because Jesus calls us to be a little uncomfortable. He doesn't call us to comfort. He calls us to the commission, right? And so let me just offer you this. We're going to sing in just a moment. We're going to have a time of, of response. I'm going to ask you to do this. If you have one person or two people or three people or four or five, whatever, you want to pray for somebody to know Jesus. All I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to call you out. I'm going to ask you to come and just pray. You can use these front benches. You can use these, these pews here. You can stand against the wall. It's okay. I just want you to pray for someone that you love that may not know Jesus or who, who is struggling that you want to be able to share the gospel with or that they may hear the gospel through someone that you know. If that is you and you want to pray for somebody, I'm going to give you a chance in just a moment to get out of your seats and do that. Maybe you need to receive Jesus Christ. Maybe you said, hey, I've never received Jesus. I don't know. I thought I was always working my way to heaven. And you need to receive him. Come, I'm going to stand right here. My microphone will be off. Come and talk to me. Let's pray together. Let's pray together and see what God is speaking to you about. Maybe you need to become a member of this church. You've never been... Uh, a member of this church, you've been coming forever, you need to be a member, come and, and make that decision. Or maybe you need to be baptized. You're baptized as a baby maybe, or you've never been baptized before, but you weren't able to illustrate that Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus rose again, as he has commanded us to do. Once we believe, then we are baptized. Whatever it is, let God speak to you. Let's play some music, and let's go ahead and stand together, and let me pray for you. Father, I praise you, Lord, for those here that need to follow, they need to pray for those to follow, that they'll get out of their comfort zone and pray, God, that, Lord, you will respond in some way in their hearts and their minds, that they will take and put feet to their faith right now. So, Lord, speak to us right now. Let this be a moment of clarity for each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together. Come on down. Thank you. 
sisters, that I have ignored people around me and not shared like I should have. Lord, speak to me. Lord, encourage me to open my mouth. Encourage me to reach out and be uncomfortable reaching to my neighbors, to my loved ones. Lord, I pray for my five. I pray, God, that they will hear you, either through me or through someone else. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are doing the same. This holy moment, God, right now, let this be a time to focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Um, praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. If you did not fill out that, that form that we have, um, that Put your name, email address, phone number, just so in case we... Hey, I pray that we're not going to have any more snow. Amen? Amen. Amen? Right? No snow until next year, right? But but still, um, Florida boy. But uh, still, let's uh, let's just be prepared and, and find a different way, a, a quicker way that we can get a hold of each other. And then if we have any special announcements, uh, it's always nice to do that. And, and these things are, are, are... The tools we have are useful for us, so... Amen. All right. Um, a couple announcements. Let me uh, give you the first one. It's five habits that will change your life. Be there Wednesday night. Be there Wednesday night. We went through a lot of material Wednesday. This week will be much more hands-on, practical. You'll be able to, to write some things and be able to, to practice with one another. Uh, you'll want to get this because if you read the Bible and you struggle with understanding that, this particular habit, and this is, this is using the HEAR method, if you've never heard that, H-E-A-R, not H-E-R-E, -E, um, HEAR method, that will help you to be able to understand um, maybe a, a verse of scripture a little more clearly. So I'm going to show you how you can do that, and uh, we'll use some other tools as well. So this, this Wednesday we had 23, did we say, -ish? you know, so praise God for that, amen? And then we've got the next one, uh, ladies, uh, starting... March 15th, this, this Wednesday night, 7 p.m. At the same time I'm doing the study, the ladies are going to have their study in a bind. By the way, Jen Wilkin, I worked for Lifeway. She is one of my favorite authors for Lifeway. Jen Wilkin, very solid, solid verse-by-verse -verse teacher. So um, you'll, you'll love that. First, second, and third John. And then um, our church goal again, $600. Listen, we're going to blow that goal out of the water because we're going to be crazy. Praying and giving, and, and one day we're going to be going. Amen. And so let's uh, let's just pray for um, pray for uh, our our offering, and also pray for the ministry that's going on all across North America. All right. Amen. So we're going to close out with our time. Is that it? Did I finish it? Yeah. Okay. Good. We're going to close out our time in prayer. Um, I'm going to stand over there if y'all um, like to greet me and say hello. I'd love to do that. And. Uh, Praise God. Thank you for being here. Let's all stand together and we'll pray, pray together. Okay? Father, we are so, so honored to be in this house. But the fact that you're here each and every Sunday with us makes it even better. Father, we ask that you would be with us as we go out to the cold. But give us a warm heart and bring somebody to us that doesn't know you so that we can tell them so we can tell them about you. Father, keep us safe today. Give us a wonderful outlook. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.